Hello guys, I'm Super Ron. Welcome back to the channel. And this week we have got my 2004 Audi RS6 in the G unit. And it's the other way around this week because we need to do some work on the rear. About a year ago, I was having a little bit of trouble with a sticky caliper on this rear left side. And I did manage to wind it back in and it freed it off, but it has seized up again. I think just from sitting for so long and now it's been put in use again, this caliper is sticking. And it also came up as an advisory on the MOT at the end of last year that the pads this side were a little lower than that side. Now, since I've had the car for two years, I haven't done anything on the rear brakes. These are still the discs and pads that were already on it. I've replaced the front ones, but the rear ones are still the ones. And I've actually found receipts. The rear discs were put on in 2012. So these have done a long, long life. But now with the rear caliper seized on, and both sides now getting a little bit low, it is time to replace the rear disc pads and I've also got a caliper for this side. The big problem with using these RS cars daily is the price of consumables like brakes and suspension because they are horrendously expensive. Brake discs for these are about £500 a corner. The pads are nearly £200 for the front and about £100 for the rear. So you're probably looking at £2,000 to replace the discs all round, which is a lot of money. So it's why you see so many of these RS cars for sale with worn discs all round. So it's really something you need to check because you might think you're getting a bargain, but you see an RS4, RS6 or RS5 with worn discs you've got a two grand bill coming up before you even start. So like I said, I've already replaced the front discs and pads when I got it. And when searching around the C5 forums, the acceptable replacement to use over the main dealers are Zimmerman Discs. They're the only aftermarket company that actually makes the discs for these because they are two piece. So you've got the alloy center and then you've got the steel rotor. So not many companies make these as an aftermarket replacement. But I've got Zimmerman discs on the front and they've had no problems and they come in at a great price. So I've got the discs from Autodoc. They're a German company that'll get all my bits for this, suspension parts. They managed to get hold of all the OE brands at a great price. They are based in Germany. So you're waiting for about a week plus for delivery, but for the price, you just can't go wrong. These come in at about 200 pound each. So it is quite a lot of money for brake discs but in the RS world, it is a great saving. And for the brake pads, these are still available from Audi, but I've got a little Google on the part numbers and I've got these genuine Volkswagen Group pads for the rear and I actually picked them up cheaper than I can get them direct from TPS. So they're genuine ones stamped with Audi. Maybe they're just new old stock from somewhere or someone else got hold of them, but these are about 70 quid delivered to my door. The only thing I couldn't get genuine because they're discontinued, they no longer make calipers for this car. As factory, they're made by TRW and luckily TRW are still making them. So you can get fully refurbished calipers. These ones come from Euro Car Parts with their offers on. These were 188 quid. So it's not really too bad of a price considering the size of them. And these ones do come powder coated black, just like factory. Something I did do on the discs before is although these are alloy centers, they do tend to corrode up and look a bit scabby. So what I did on my last ones is I got some silver caliper paint and sprayed the center bells just so they're nice, all silver and shiny. So when you wash it, these all come up like glossy and silver. So it really makes the bells stand out. So it's not necessary, but over time, these do start looking a bit gray and a bit grubby in the center. At least they're not rusty because they're not steel, but just behind the nice shiny wheels, it is good to put a bit of silver. So I'm gonna do that first, heat that up so that sets on there, and then we can get all the bits put on the car. So I thought we'd start this side. This is the one with the sticky caliper. You can see the discs are getting a bit low now. So we'll do it all at once. There's the caliper off. It's a bit tricky to get that handbrake cable out because it is seized all the way in. There was no release, but you can see there on the caliper, the boot has completely come off. Water's got in and that's just corroded around the outside of the piston. So it's seized on 
and that's munched the pads right in. They were low anyway, so it's not like I've destroyed a good set of brakes. They were ready for replacement. And one convenient thing, probably the only convenient thing I've found on an RS so far, is you can take the rear discs off without taking the carriers off. Normally you take the caliper off and then you have to take this carrier off before you can get the discs. So on the RS's, they come out. So thank you very much, Audi. As you can see, there's quite a big lip on it. They were ready for replacement. We have got all new boots and everything to go on these because these have perished as well. So we've got all new ones of them to go on. So I think I might as well paint this carrier while it's on there so it matches all the brand new brakes everywhere. Paint's all nice and dry on the bells now. As you can see, it's give that glossy finish the coating on the disc, they are protected. It just doesn't look quite as nice. I did these ones when I got it on the old discs. And they still look like brand new two years later. So really happy. These discs are sided, so there's left and right. So you've got to make sure you match them up. So this is the one for this side. As you can see, it's just the way the spirals go. But they match. And then here's the genuine Audi pads to go back in. And they all come with the guides, new bolts and everything else. As you can see, these ones with that seized caliper, that had finished them off. Obviously got really hot. They've been in there a long time. So it's not always good buying a super low mileage car that hasn't done a lot of work. Sometimes things do just seize up. So we've got the new caliper to go on, genuine TRW. And where that ground bit is off, that's where the Audi badge is. So they're genuine calipers refurbished and they just grind off the Audi badge. So we'll get all this back on and we'll have a brand new brake setup. back on and looking fresh you saw me put the pads in there's no need to cover these in copper grease like you used to back in the day they've have a built-in come of a foam backing on the pad so i just put a little dab on each little ear that goes in those sliders the other thing you may have noticed is the old caliper is still attached i haven't disconnected the brake fluid line yet because i want to have as little time as possible with it all unplugged, so there's minimal fluid loss and you don't drain the master cylinder or anything. But now we're all on, we're all bolted on, so I think it's time to disconnect that brake line and put it to the new caliper. Then handbrake cable on, quick bleed, and we are done. With the caliper all on, need to bleed the brakes now. Got this little easy bleed set up, which pressurizes up the brake reservoir and pumps fluid through to the back. It's a great little thing, so you just go onto a tire and it makes one man bleeding a lot easier. And then it builds up its pressure from the tire. So then this is like an assistant putting his foot on the brake and we have to go back to the back and open up the bleed nipple and we should have fluid coming out. Just like that. Easy bleeds are really good for getting any bubbles out. It just forces all the fluid through. And it is as easy as that. We are all bled up. So that makes this side 
all finished. Onto this side, so this should be a nice easy, just a disc and pad change. However, from experience, these VW Audi calipers are usually a nightmare to wind back in. As you saw from the other one, it's come out, it's ripped the boot, and it was seized solid, which is why it wouldn't adjust anymore. I'm hoping this caliper is just gonna wind in and we're gonna be nice and easy here. Discs off, pads out, wind the caliper back, pads in, discs on, caliper back on, job finished. But is this hoping too much? Initial inspection, not too bad. The problem starts when these rubbers get snulled up and then when, as it's twisting round, it just pulls the rubbers out. But this rubber seal looks complete. Soft, hasn't gone hard. So fingers crossed, we'll be able to get it out. What I'm gonna do is bolt it back in to its carrier because when you're twisting this to try and wind it back in, sometimes it's hard to hold both at the same time. So I usually, Try and bolt it back together and then that gives you a lot more purchase to wind in the piston back in. So let's see. And we are triumphant. It's wound all the way back. The boot looks good all the way around, still nice and soft and intact. So we shouldn't have any problems in the future. So this is all powder coated from factory. So that will clean up nicely. I think as we're here, this is the last bit. I'll just give this side a little black touch up paint as well to complete the job. Can see how much extra brake dust was coming off the one with the seized caliper. This was the driver's side, this was the passenger side, so it really was chomping into it. So while these are off, I'll give them a clean as well. And another side on, all as good as new. I'm so happy that that caliper just wound in nice and easy because that could have been a whole headache and possibly another 200 quid caliper. So this one's wound in nicely. It's the original Audi one, no problems with the boots. So that should last a nice long time again. I said at the beginning that these are sided left and right. And that's because the angle of the fins in there. The newer ones just have straight fins and they don't have a left and a right, but these ones, Still do. I guess that was just for cost saving because then they didn't have to make two sides. They could just make one disc. But on these ones, we're all on and good. There's the wheels all cleaned up. So we'll stick them back on. Here's all the old bits. As you can see, they're all very well worn, needed renewing. So with the seized caliper is a good opportunity to do it all together. So all these bits are now destined for the bin, all except for the caliper, because that does have a service exchange charge, which means we need to return the old caliper to get our fee back, which is one of the reasons I didn't get the caliper from Autodoc as well. Even though that exact caliper was available, it just would have been a bit of a hassle sending that all the way back to Germany Whereas this one is about the same price from Euro Car Parts, and it's just a lot easier just to get the surcharge back to this end. It was a lot of money. This is probably about 650 quid here, but it's just one of those things when you drive an RS6, bits like this are expensive. It's a lot cheaper than it would have been from a main dealer. Just the parts alone would have been about 1500 quid, and the caliper's not even available from Audi. But they are big brakes, 
and when you've got a two ton car coming down from 200 miles per hour, they're the kind of things that you don't want to scrimp on. It may look like an estate, but it really is a supercar with a big body on it. That went a lot smoother than it could have done. The caliper this side bolted straight on, bolt off, and with the easy bleed, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Easy bleed, bleed straight up, no problems. The only bit I was really worried about was that other side caliper winding in because they're renowned from being seized on, just like this one is. When you try and start to wind them in, they just get stuck. But luckily that one, the boot was still fully intact, fully operational, and it wound all the way back in. So I never should have doubted the German engineering for one moment. That's a little bit of maintenance that just had to be done, but now with everything refreshed, we shouldn't have any trouble and we shouldn't ever have to visit this again. So I can happily go and cruise around in the RS6 again and not worry about being embarrassed by the squeaky rear brake that was sticking on and the constant one black wheel. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and hopefully it'll be useful for some people in the future if they're doing the same job. So make sure you give this video a like, make sure you subscribe because there's lots more Audi content to come a full workshop and you seem to enjoy the home renovation run so there may be some DIY episodes as well but until next time make sure you have fun <laughs> <laughs>